Now let's get better acquainted with the PMOD CLS LCD character display, especially the escape sequences that are used to configure the display. Now this is the LCD character display that's included in the NI MyRio embedded systems kit. It's the PMOD CLS by Digilent. The PMOD CLS supports three different styles of serial communications, UART, SPI, and I2C. I'll be focusing on the UART in this demonstration, but do recognize that the functionality of the display is completely independent of the serial communications standard that you're using. Now the three connections I'll need here would be the two power supply connections as well as the receive line for the UART. The PMOD CLS can be powered from 2.7 to 5.5 volts DC, gives you two rows of 16 characters each. You have a two row by 40 character buffer though, so there's essentially an extra set of characters that are not immediately displayed. Simply send the characters to the display and they get displayed from left to right and then top to bottom. Then you use escape sequences to send specific instructions that are used to configure the display. Let's look at these escape sequences in more detail. An escape sequence is so named because it begins with the ASCII character escape. And in hexadecimal, that character is 1B. So this is a non-printing character. You then follow it by the left square bracket character. And then you follow it by a collection of numerical parameters with possibly no nu numerical parameters required and then you have your command character or instruction character. Here's a list of some of the more commonly used instructions for the display. Lowercase j means clear the display and home the cursor. This instruction requires no parameters. Would work like this. Send an escape, send the square bracket, and then send a j, and that's it. Asterisk is the reset instruction. It's the same behavior as power cycling the LCD display. Lowercase c means adjust the cursor mode. This one requires a single parameter. Here's some examples. If you set it to zero, you turn the display off. One means on, two means on, and then blinking. Lowercase e is the display enable. Zero means you turn the display off and then one means turn it on. The character buffer remains completely unchanged when you do that, however. Here's some more commonly used instructions. Lowercase h means display mode. When you set it to zero, that means wrap the characters at 16 this one means wrap at 40, and that happens to be the power on default, by the way. Capital H means set the cursor position. This one requires two numerical parameters. In this case, the numerical parameters are separated by a semicolon. So you send the row number, send the semicolon, and then send the column number. Use 0 for the top row and 1 for the bottom row, and 0 to 39 for the column number, with 0 indicating the far left. Lowercase s means save the cursor position. Lowercase u means recall the cursor position. No numerical parameters required for those. And finally, I'll mention the two scroll-related commands, at scrolls the display left by the given number of columns, while capital A scrolls the display right by the number of columns. Now I've put together a simple VI that I can use to demonstrate the operation of the LCD character display. I can specify an instruction, I can also specify characters to send, and then I have the option about whether or not to send either one or both. Here's my instruction, I concatenate the escape sequence with the escape followed by the square bracket. The backslash codes display allows me to see that non-printing escape character. I concatenate those together 
and then if send instruction is true, I send that out to the UART. Otherwise, I send the empty string. Here's the characters. And again, I have the option about whether or not to send those out. Concatenate those two strings and send those out the UART. Here I can pick which UART I'm interested in using based on the two available connectors. Here's my pins. And I'm using the write mode for the UART. I'm using the baud rate of 9600. The PMOD CLS actually supports two other baud rates as well. We want the ability to send the full range of ASCII characters, so we need eight data bits total. And finally, we'll just go with the defaults for then stop bits and the parity. Let's give this a try. Enter a little bit of text. Go ahead and run the VI. And we see it displayed on the screen. Try sending three more characters. You'll notice these are then appended to what was already displayed. And at this point, it's filling the 40 character buffer and eventually the characters wrap around to the second line. Let's try an, an instruction. Now H with zero changes the display to wrap after 16 characters. Let's try this out. Maybe switching to lowercase will make this a little bit more evident. You'll notice if you look carefully that it's wrapping now at 16 characters rather than filling up that 40 character buffer. Let's try another instruction. This is the one that sets the cursor modes. This enables the cursor. You can see that here, the little underscore under the E. And then number two sets that to blinking mode. Let's try the scrolling commands next. Let's scroll the display one column to the left. Then we can scroll one to the right, or we could do multiple at a time. Let's try another one. Let's set the cursor position to row zero and column five. Let's make that jump to column 10. And let's try switching to the bottom row. Here you can save the current position of the cursor. Let me then move the cursor somewhere else so I can confirm that we can recall that position. Now that we've moved it elsewhere, let's try retrieving that cursor position. And sure enough, it jumps back to that position on the lower, lower row. Here's the command where you can disable or enable the display. Again, you're not erasing the contents of the character buffer. You're just indicating whether or not the characters are displayed. This one actually does clear out the buffer. This says clear the display and home the cursor. Send a few characters back out there to get something on the screen again. And the asterisk resets the display and it's the same thing as cycling the power to the display. Now let me clear these out. I want to show you how you can send non-printing and other specialized characters out to the display. I'm going to switch to the backslash codes display. Here you can display characters by hex code. Simply start by typing a backslash followed up with the pair of hexadecimal digits. Here's a letter, turns out to be capital H. Let's try something 
which is still in the lower 128 characters for ASCII. And this is the very last one that's still in the lower 128 characters. That's X7F. You can also display characters in the upper 128 range. For example, there's hexadecimal ED. There's F3, it looks like an infinity symbol. And F7 is pi. Lots of possibilities. I encourage you to explore that range of ASCII characters.